Welcome to the realm of magic and mystery, classic horror and sci-fi. You are now entering the House of the Unusual podcast with your hosts, Eddie and Joe. Welcome all you cool ghouls and friendly fiends to the House of the Unusual podcast. This is our first episode of 2023, Whoa. and I got my good friends with me, wow. Eddie, good. Chuck, and Sherry. All right, hey. everyone, what's hello, up? Hello. All right, hello. Happy New Year. <laughs> yes, happy New Year. Happy 2023 to everybody. This is our number one podcast for wow. 2023. Wow. It's crazy. All right, so I'm hoping everybody out there had a good New Year. Everybody listening to us in podcast land. Thank you for joining us once again in this brand new year, and I hope you stick with us and tell your friends about us throughout the year, and I hope everybody out there had a good holiday season, a good new year. Everybody was uh, safe and healthy, had a good time, didn't drink or eat too much like I did, Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of other people out there, but um, you know what? It was, it was a good new year. It went by very That's quick. Gross. You know, New Year's Eve, I spent pretty much the whole day watching college football, which was uh, <laughs> a lot of good football on uh, that day that even ran into the new year huh. and uh, kind of spent it low key. You know, just um, some yeah. family came over to watch the uh, the Michigan game. My team, sadly, they lost. Ohio State lost. You know, mm-hmm. if you Big Ten fans out there or. or anything they all lost but it was a it was a nice low-key day you know we just hung hung out and um you know when the ball dropped we were sitting at home at the time so it was uh it was pretty good you know we weren't out partying or nothing like that <laughs> those right. days are long gone oh, those, are, those are gone <laughs> oh yeah you know, we're me too you know i think the only thing we did that day is about the um the start of the ohio state game we went down oh. to a local cigar lounge they had a little um get together i think there were six people there and had a cigar watched the first half and then we went nice. home and nice and finished it up so it was um like i said it was very low-key and it was relaxing and it was a good time so how did you guys spend your new year uh chuck and sherry did you guys oh, I'll tell you, it was, it was partying and, and tearing <laughs> up the time? we're so wild we're wild animals <laughs> Let's see. I started uh, Saturday morning early. That was New Year's Eve. Uh, I went swimming at the Y, and then I came home. We grabbed the dog. We were watching our son's dog, the, our, our little guy, Chief. I love him. We miss him already. We kept him for the weekend so that they could have um, some time and not worry about him. And we went, took him for a nice long walk, almost three miles, right, honey? Yeah. Where did we walk? At the cemetery, (laughs) our favorite place. And we put all the stuff in the crock pot. We put pork, sauerkraut, kielbasa, and later the hot dogs. And it stewed all day, and he's all excited about that. Then tell him what we did for the evening. Yeah, we watched Twilight Zones. Woohoo! I mean, just the two of us. Yeah, that was nice. nice. We just, well, we had a uh, we, we had a sci-fi uh, marathon with the Twilight Zones, <laughs> yeah. and you know what? Getting back to the homemade kibasi, I buy mine at a local butcher shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a guy that I went to college with, Rick, he went all the way out to Steubenville and he bought some homemade kibasi for himself and for me. So I put it in there with it. And uh, yeah, so it was it was really good. It was- yeah, it was on the spicy side. He said <laughs> it's real garlicky, but oh my goodness, it was almost like a hot sausage kind of hot stuff. But I like hot stuff. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it was good. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We had a nice blast. Just we chilling. did kind of make it to midnight, kind of. Yeah, like, I was watching Twilight Zones, but Sherry went upstairs. I went upstairs, and Chief was laying on my bed, and then Chuck, I hear him coming up. It was around midnight. We hear everybody outside banging <laughs> pots and pans. I was going to do that like I usually do, but I didn't. Yeah. So we just Man, went happy Banging New pots year. and pans. Well, if you're around here, you'd hear gunshots all night. Oh! Oh, yeah. I tell, oh my goodness. I tell you what, I was going to bang my head off the fence to see if there's, <laughs> to see if there's anything in there. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> how about you, Eddie? What did you do? I worked. I oh, worked. that's and, right. Oh, that's Aww. right. You did call me. That's right. That's right. And the bull yeah. hit, the, you know, fell down and hit me on the head and it woke me up. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> happy new year. 
Aww. Actually, it was so foggy in my area because, I mean, so foggy, you couldn't yeah. even see the buildings in New York. And this is right across the Hudson. <clears throat> the, everything yeah. was a total fog. So it was kind of funny because wow. they tried doing fireworks, I think, in New York somewhere. Yeah. And you would see this faint little glow. <laughs> no more than, you know, when you look at it, it would be like five feet tall all the way down across the river. Wow. Yeah, it, was, it was very quiet. It was a pretty nice New Year's because, you know, there's mm -hmm. nothing better than when you have a nice quiet one, come home and don't have any problems and yeah, people coming home drunk. I was glad I was out of there Shoot. at 12. So all the parties were still going by the time I left. And this oh, way, that's good. I didn't yeah. bother with any. Wow. But that's about it. Nothing yeah, much. Yeah, nothing fancy. Hey, um, Eddie, how, how's your weather over there in New Jersey? Right now, believe it or not, it's been raining for the last three days. Ooh. Uh, it's gloomy outside. It's just the way I know that when i saw that weather i said joe must be feeling so yeah. alive right now oh, i love that. it yep and then is, it, is it cold there joe uh, uh no it's you... not even you know to be honest with you it's cold where you're outside for a while and it feels like it penetrates the bone but there's mm -hmm. really and uh, it's not really that cold you know it's just just cold yeah no yeah. wind or anything the cold because of the rain yeah. Close to your it's, bones. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like sixty degrees here. I yeah, mean, yeah, fifty nine, sixty. I it's... mean, for for January, that's but, ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Wow. I don't really mind. My, I don't mind I, it either. I'm with you, I, Eddie. I'd rather have water than snow because you know you got snow and yeah. and Joe. I asked him, can he come over help me plow? And he told me no because he's too far. I don't know what type of excuse that is. Yeah, <laughs> what kind of friend are you, Joe? Huh? Yeah, just we could get snow here, man. I. This rain, it feels like it honestly feels like it's it's fall weather, like we are going mm -hmm. into October. Exactly. Like, I, I don't know, should I take my Christmas stuff down and put up Halloween stuff? Yeah, I, let's do yeah, it. yeah, go ahead, Joe. That's a good <laughs> idea. We'll do that today. So let me know. I'm telling you, I feel like I entered a time time war slip or something a where I, I slip, yeah, slip back in time and <laughs> it's gonna be Halloween pretty soon. Because I'm you telling know, you, yep, Chuck Joe is crazy, huh, baby? No. You answered, uh, what? yeah, we need the uh. Hey, there we go. It's it's almost yeah, it's almost Halloween, guys. You, you know what I'm I'm looking forward to? I'm looking forward to see if uh maybe stupid comics is coming out with number eight soon. I can't wait for that. Um haven't heard from him yet. Uh, yeah, you know what? I checked the site actually, I think it was New Year's Eve to see if he had anything and uh nothing new yet. So you know, we'll have to hit him up. Everybody, you know, just just hit them up on the um, the Facebook site or not the Facebook site the uh, the website. There's a um, a thread specifically for his comic. So everyone on there, go underneath that thread and ask Ski, S K I. Just put you know the at symbol then S K I and ask him where stupid is. We demand our stupid number eight. So we'll yes, uh, we'll be holding we'll thread him bomb him on there. <laughs> hey. Joe, I think he did post something uh, yesterday or something because I did get. I haven't checked the actual forum, uh, but I think I, I saw something of him post. I don't know if it's just a Happy New Year or something, but he did write something. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna log anything. on now. I just looked a little bit ago to see if there's anything new, and yeah, um, he, he came out of I the. I didn't notice it. So let's see if he he posted anything because if not, we're gonna we're gonna thread bomb him on there and uh, hey, uh, force I, I him to do it. I got a question, Joel. It's feeling great. I start now. My nose is sniffly. What, what's going on? Are you getting me infected from your area? I am. It's coming over the. Uh, it's over coming the over the speaker. Yeah. <laughs> wow, man. Shared with love. Yeah. yeah you know smaller, something, uh, smaller, Chuck? Yeah. You you mentioned my brother sent you some business cards. Yeah, yeah. they're gorgeous. I'm gonna I'm gonna send him an email. Beautiful. Oh. What do, what do they look like? They got the twilight zone and stuff on. <laughs> well, he got the picture of me that he. Uh, you know, that he superimposed and he, yep. um, and then he, yep. uh, you know, put my phone number and everything and they're, they're in color. They're really, really nice. It's up, it's up on the, over here by the ear. And very so, interesting. yeah, we're going to post, we'll post a one on the, uh, on the forum. You know, they're very, you know, very nice. 10 years ago, not 10 years ago, back in 1998. I get a package with uh, 5,000 business cards for the thing. And he's the one that actually forced me to go back into mail order because, uh, uh, oh, believe it or not, like around 95, 96, I think I, 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 cause you know, believe it or not, back in that day before, this is before eBay, you know, eBay yeah. started like in 1997, 98, whatever. But 
to run an ad in any, even a comic book, I couldn't afford it. It was a comic book was $5,000 a full page. And that's with connections. That wow. I had. And this is per month. And if you ran an ad in popular science, which was really the only place I would run or boys life magazine, um, it was, uh, I think $15 a word and with a minimum of 10 words. So you paid $200 and then you have to wait three months for the ad to respond mm -hmm. uh, for it to come out and make money. So, you know, I kind of laid off a little bit of mail order and uh, he got me back in. And then with the eBay coming on and stuff, it all was a whole new era, you know? So I actually, that's, he's basically the one that got me back in and oh. he started with those business cards he made. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, that's that was really nice. Yeah. Cool. I tell you what, he's a, he's a good guy. And, uh, nice. and, and thank, thank you. you. And thank you, Joe, for the, uh, for the Bella Lugosi book. It's really cool, man. I appreciate it. Hey, no problem. I, I, I thought that would be something you might like because it really digs deep into his his theater career. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting. You know, it talks about the different cities and everything that he went oh, to. Oh, absolutely and, fascinating. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I'm still on the search to see if he, if he had any teeth. I'm looking. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. You know, I want to uh, give a thanks to uh, Eddie's brother, too. He sent me two... Uh, monster reference books uh one was on universal monsters and one was on uh, uh human monsters from the movies which was really cool i'd never seen that one however unfortunately the universal monsters one i did have a uh, a copy that i bought it when it came out so um you know since he was nice enough to send me something i said you know what i said i'm gonna you know Aww. pay this back and do something nice for somebody else so there's a guy that works with my my wife at the bookstore and He's real big into monsters and all that. So I told her, I said, see if he has this book or not. And mm -hmm. fortunately, he was he wasn't able to get it when it, it came out. So I uh, passed on that copy to him and he absolutely oh, loved it. Nice. So nice. You know, uh, Joe, uh, you should get him to come on the show. You know what? I I, I should. Yeah, he, he would probably yeah. be a great guest. I know he he works a lot, uh, two jobs, but uh Terry, if you're out there listening, man, we're going to get you on this uh, show, whether yeah. you like it or not. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Come on, on Terry. Yeah. I, uh, so. Believe it or not, I, I Joe, the same thing as you, man. The same thing happened to me. I actually bought that book when it first came out and paid like 80 something dollars or whatever it was wow. for it. Um, but yeah, I, I did have a second copy, too. Isn't that funny? Well, we That's figured cool. you have a second or, or tenth copy. Of it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the one thing I did want to mention, I did take... Eddie's advice, and I tuned into Tubi, and I've been watching the hilarious House of Frankenstein. And I tell you what, that's a great show. I mean, I could see why Eddie liked it when he was a kid. It's from 1971, I believe. And I tell you what, it's a really, really good uh, performance. Uh, it's each each of the episodes, I believe, is one hour. You know, you know what? It's a lot of sight gags, a lot of one liners, and they also teach things. Like they have a, a professor on there, which this guy looks familiar. I know I've seen him somewhere. What he teaches, like the laws of physics, like basic stuff and everything. And there's a section where they talk about like different uh, wild, yeah. wild types of beasts, like, you know, that are in Africa, uh, like different types of animals and so forth. It's, it, you know, it's a very informative show. So kids just don't laugh, but they learn something as well. Yeah, you know, what? I, I seen that show a, a handful of them uh, years ago, but um, I was looking at it the other day. There's something like 130 some episodes, I believe. Yeah. There yeah, is. So I'm gonna have to revisit that and and check more out. I, I, you know, I never looked it up when I seen it. I always thought it was, you know, maybe 20, 24 episodes. You know, a, a type of, of season. But yeah, it only it ran. I'm looking online right now. I just pulled it up. So it ran uh, one season, but it had 130 episodes. Wow, isn't that amazing? So and it ran in 1971. That's really mm -hmm. crazy. And I tell you, they had some really cool guests. Uh, one of them being Vincent Price on there, who who is one of the uh, one right. of the stars. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna have to check out a lot more of it. Do, you know, Chuck, do they have all all the episodes on Tubi? I don't believe I, so. I maybe there's eight or nine, Eddie. Right? Is it somewhere? No, I, I think I think Tubi has the whole series now. Oh, do they? Oh, yeah, Tubi, not not Pluto. I think you're watching it. But you know what? I was gonna tell you though with that show. I know it said one season. I also read one time thirteen seasons. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, 130 episodes. That was because they. I remember the show in 1971. I saw it as a kid. I used to run home from school to watch it. Nobody's ever heard of the show, and a lot no, of I never, I never, I never knew it existed. 
I know a lot of people, believe it or not, for some crazy reason on YouTube in the last couple of days, I've noticed that they've just realized that the show existed. One guy mentioned that he didn't know how in the world he would not have known of this show. He goes, how did it pass me when he loves Vincent Price? And he says he's watched everything Vincent Price. He goes, and then he, he, he mentioned something that one time they asked Vincent Price, why is it that you do so many things being such a, you know, professional actor? I think he, he started in the theater and all that. Why would he always do things geared for children? And he said, um, the reason I did that is because children will let you live forever. And the guy goes, genius, you know, which is true. Yeah, that was genius. Vincent, yeah, that's how I met Vincent Price, actually, watching that show. And today he's one of my favorite actors. And I, I you know, I, I could say I was introduced to him not watching TV shows but watch or movies, but probably watching that show. And, and <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's it's a very good genius thing. But yeah, Joe, you're right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check out a lot more of those uh episodes and I'll tell you what, they are it's, hilarious. They yeah, are, it's, it's been so a while since I've seen them, so it's uh I'm gonna have to check it out and uh maybe we'll put something up on the, the website, let everyone know. Uh, how many episodes and all that, but it is on uh, Tubi, which is a free uh, streaming mm -hmm. service. So there's no yeah. excuse out there, everyone. No excuse. Put Tubi on your on your TV, your Roku or Amazon, and watch it. No excuse. It is free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and of course, after you're done listening to our podcast, you know. Of that's course. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty yeah. cool. So, uh, Chuck, what? Um, you said you watched some Twilight Zone episodes oh, yeah. what, what, what were some of the good ones you got to see this year i tell you what uh i didn't see the one where the where the couple is is like they wake up in a strange bed and they don't really recognize where they're at uh, but that's that's one of my favorites they're they're basically what they are is in a in like a dollhouse and uh, so there's a giant uh, almost like an alien girl that keeps giggling and so forth i didn't see it this time but that's one of my favorites that's a really really cool one Joe's face. and uh yeah. yeah you know but uh let's see the one the uh the ones we saw oh uh, you know my favorite was yeah. um what's it called Twenty Thousand feet yeah nightmare at Twenty Thousand yeah. feet oh yeah william Very shatner good. yeah with that monster on the wing yeah i tell you what it's so campy it's so corny because like the outfit that the guy's wearing you know the big gremlin or whatever he is like you could almost see a zipper on it. I, I mean, love it. <laughs> but it's, it's so funny. But it's so cool, though. It really is. His wife's always sleeping. Yeah, his wife know? is always sleeping. You can't get her awake unless she took a, a sleeping pill. <laughs> yeah, maybe she did. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I tell you what, there's yeah. always one Twilight Zone that I have to watch this time of the year, and it's The Night of the Meek. Oh, yeah. I love it. that one? Which Absolutely. That That's one? with Art, Art Carney dressed as Santa Claus, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I know we we've talked about it before in here, so we won't spend too much time. But that is is yeah. one of my favorites. Uh, everyone out there, if you haven't seen it, it is a uh, it's not scary or or anything no. like that. It's actually a pretty it's it's a it'll put a lump in your throat, man. It's a yeah. uh, it's a good one, but it's called The Night of the Meek. Uh, it's episode forty seven. It aired December twenty third, nineteen sixty. Mm -hmm. Definitely checked it out. Like Chuck said, Art Carney. Uh, plays uh, Henry Corwin, which is uh, Santa, Santa, and John Fildler as uh, Mr. Dundee. And this is definitely an episode you won't forget. Like I said, it's not scary. It's not um, sci-fi-ish or anything like that. It's a very, it's a very good and uh, appropriate show yes, for the Christmas time. So definitely check that out. But. Oh, uh, no. I tell you what, Rod Serling was so far ahead of his time. I mean, he wrote about 65% of these shows. I mean, like there was a few other people too that wrote different things, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, like uh, Charles Beaumont and there's a couple other guys, but you know, but he penned about, about 65, close to 70% of the episodes and he was so far ahead of his time. I mean, the guy was unreal. And, and you know what, Chuck, and, and it's, I, there's probably a lot of people that are like this and you know, over the years, you know, I, I've been watching Twilight Zone probably 30 plus years and you catch different ones here and there, mm -hmm. you know. So there's there's 156 episodes, you know, a lot, a lot. And yeah. I look back and I'm like, you know, how many of those 156 episodes have I actually seen? Because, you know, <laughs> you catch it here and there on, on TV right. or you might pull up an episode online or something like that. So, you know, I, I've been wanting to for a while is. Um, I have, I think, season one through three, but I want to get all five seasons 
and sit down and go through them disc by disc from number one on and say, okay, I've seen this. Okay. I didn't see this or I don't right, remember right. it and watch it to make sure that I've seen every one. Cause I could guarantee that I, and I've seen a lot of twilight zones, but I've probably seen, you know, the same ones over and over. So right, maybe, right. you yeah. know, half of that list or something. So there's a lot out there that I've, I'm, I'm probably missing that are really good. Yeah. Or that I haven't seen in a while and don't remember. So I'm sure there's a lot of people like that that say, oh, I've been watching Twilight Zone for 50 years. <laughs> right. You know, but, you know, you watch two or three episodes a year or something. And, you know, did you see all 156? You don't know. Yeah, so. there's always a couple that are pretty obscure and they kind of pop up a little bit. But you know what? There's a lot of the Hollywood stars that actually got their star. Like Burt Reynolds was in an episode. Robert Redford, Robert Redford yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Klugman played in about three episodes, oh, I believe, yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean, some fantastic stuff on there. I love it. Oh yeah, the, yeah. There's a tons of the tons of the actors on there, and they were uh, very good actors. The production values were were very good. Yeah. The writing was very good. Now there's a few that you know are less than desirable. We'll put it like that, yeah. but feel the same way. I tell you what, the yeah. worst one is the one with. Uh, oh, what is it called? Where the, where the where the Maytag repair man plays an angel, um, and yeah. oh, it's it's bad. It's I, I'm yeah. shocked that it's that bad. What I think Cavender is coming or something like that. And uh, it, I don't recall that. Oh, one. it was horrible. It's terrible. Now, what was the premise of that one? Somehow, this guy comes back to Earth and he's trying to grant Carol Burnett, I believe, a couple wishes or something. But it, there's just no story to it. It's like just bad acting it was just wow it's actually oh, it's sorry, actually Carol. yeah it's actually painful to watch <laughs> you know yeah. yeah you know what uh if you if you have a chance you'll see what i'm saying it's it's not a good that one that she doesn't talk is that cloris leachman no that's agnes moorhead agnes moorhead oh that's a weird one. yeah that's a really cool one though there there's like actually it. no one talking in the whole episode that's the only one uh, there, there's a craft that comes down, and the and these little uh, these little aliens get out. They're actually like wind it's like up. A mini. It, yeah. Well, they wind. Because Rod Serling said in one of his uh, the interviews that they, you know, the budget was tight on that one. So they, <laughs> yeah, so they bought these wind up, uh, uh, you know, like these little, you know, you know like spacemen, and they kind of wound it up, and they just <laughs> walked them around. There you go. But yeah, there check that go. out. That's a good one too. It's with it's with Agnes Moorhead. What's it called? Do you remember? I can't remember. Oh, but there's no talking in it at all. There you go, silent. Oh wow. Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah, very. She does make a few noises though. Yeah, like she'll scream and grunt and like, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Yeah. But that's about it. Huh. I tell you, there's a um. Go ahead, Eddie. Did you have something? No, I was gonna say. Remember, a lot of people. <clears throat> Agnes <clears throat> Moorhead is the woman who played Bewitch, the mother on Bewitch. Right, yes. Endora. She is. That's it, Endora. Yep. I tell you, there's another good episode that I, I like to watch this time of year from it, and it's uh, Five Characters in Search of an Exit. Oh, I love that one. Look, yeah, they, they turn out to be toys that are that are in a Salvation Army uh, bin, almost like a barrel. Oh, is that the ballerina? Yeah, the ballerina, the, the clown. Yeah. The, yeah. The really good one. Really good. Yeah, that, I tell you what, that one really took me for a, um, a yeah. twist the first time I seen it, because I'm like, you know, <laughs> these characters, how'd they get? stuck in this you know yeah. did they get abducted and oh, they're trying yeah. to get yeah. out or you know what's going on I know. and then that one makes it over and then falls to the ground and is a doll and then the <laughs> whole ending and i'm like what the heck was i know that that thing, that thing blew my mind first time i seen it i couldn't believe it i couldn't believe it i love it yeah how about how about the old man in the cave we've seen that again that's that's a really good one you know what like it's it's a post-war scenario and uh, there, there's a community of people there that are real thin and gaunt. And, and like, there's an old man that gives them advice and uh, he lives in a cave. And so they have a bunch of canned, uh -huh. you know, like canned goods. Uh, but the old man says, no, no, you know what? These are, Don't these, yeah, these are contaminated. And then James uh, Coburn comes in there. It's like radiation fallout Yeah. And yeah. so James Co Coburn comes in with a bunch of other military people. And so he goes, that's all nonsense. Got this. Uh, and so, he, so, so they eat the stuff. And, and they're all dead except for this one old guy. <laughs> it's it's like hilarious, but it, I've it's never really seen I've never seen that that yeah. one that I remember. And, and uh, the old man in the cave, they finally blow the doors uh, off, like there's a door in the cave or whatever, and it's a big computer. I mean, I mean, where the heck did this come from? Who built it? I mean, it's just it blows your mind, man. That's crazy. You know what? I it, that almost sounds kind of like a um. I read this book years ago. I have it right next to me on my shelf. I'm I'm trying to look for it. i think it's called the ant people um hold on, let me see uh it's called the insect warriors 
Oh, okay. And it's by Rex Dean Levy, and I believe it was, uh, I have it bagged, I don't want to open it, but I think it was from the 50s. Mm-hmm. But it was a, uh, it's a short, it's a short little uh, novel at I think 150 some pages, but mm-hmm. it's of these people fighting these giant insects. Oh, and, wow. you know, it goes through, you know, their community keeps, it, it's almost like they're very primitive. You know, they have bow and arrows, they have uh, spears and all that. So they're getting attacked by these giant insects and they're trying to protect their community. And the one guy says, you know, I'm going to, you know, go after them and I'm going to take kind of like take the fight to them. So he goes and he kind of reaches the end of this jungle that they're that they're living in. Mm -hmm. And it's like this wall. So he gets a few guys from the community and says, hey, let's go see what this is. So they make it to the top of the wall and here they're in this this huge like room and it's almost like an experiment but where they're like they're they're like tiny people like mm-hmm. very very tiny people smaller than insects so regular size insects would seem giant to them mm-hmm. but it must have been some type of experiment because there's people with lab coats that were uh sitting in the room chairs that were dead and they were they were skeletalized, so they were just all skeletons, mm-hmm. and it kind of ends like that. So it really leaves it open. You don't know, like, was it what was it some type of experiment? And something happened where, you know, these people, these lab technicians or whoever that was conducting the experiment, they they died in the room. You know, it doesn't leave you what was going on. It's almost like a, a it's a very twist ending that you know makes you think a lot. Like, what the heck happened here? Yeah, really. I'll have to <laughs> check that out. I never heard of it. Wow. Hey, Joe, uh, let me ask you a question. Doesn't that sound like the Twilight Zone where they're like in this thing, like monkey in a barrel, that they're, they're trying to get out of this huge room and one guy gets on top of the other, the other, and then when they finally, it's like a little toy thing on the Twilight Zone. You know what I'm talking about, Chuck? Yeah, yeah. I think Joe was just talking about that. That's fi- uh, No, but Joe was talking about a book, wasn't he? I thought it was similar to that. That's why I'm... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, 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 almost similar to that, but it was... um. Man, it was weird. I, I have to look. I Chuck, if I have a um I had a second book of that, but I, I think I sold it. I either sold it or it's somewhere in my yeah. my pile of stuff I have on eBay. I'll have to check. If I have it, I'll send it to you. But but if not, for anybody out there, it is The Insect Warriors mm. by Rex Dean Levy. And you could find the book on eBay for you know a couple bucks. Yeah. Right. But it's a it's a quick read and it's a very, very twist ending story it's really cool Wor- worthwhile you know even if you know the ending it's it's really interesting how they build up to it and yeah sounds uh, cool man you yeah. know how they leave it open so that sounds interesting joe um post a picture of it joe maybe i'd like to see if i can get it on amazon or something yeah I'll, I'll, you know what i'll send a um I'll you know put a picture on the forum site yeah put it on you know i was gonna say it's kind of interesting that you say the forum um the other day I had a surprise. I was doing one of my uh, unboxing videos that I actually posted it on the first, I think it came out. And I found the Aqua Specs that I gave. I thought it was the last one I ever had. Mm-hmm. And I gave it to Todd because Todd had never seen that particular one. The one I gave Todd is the one that appears in Mail Order Mysteries by Kirk Damaris. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I found, and then my daughter, my oldest daughter said, Daddy, I remember when I was a kid, you had four of them. And I go, are you sure how to? And the reason she said that is because I know I sold one wow. and I gave Todd one. So I thought I would, that's it. I had no more. And I came across one. So I actually, the one that I came across, I, I show it on the uh, that video. Okay. And and I thought that that was interesting. I, I mean, I got to reach out to Todd and see what his intake is. On that. <laughs> and that means there's got to be another one somewhere. But, <clears throat> you know, when you guys are talking about Twilight Zone, Joe, why don't we make a list and talk about sci-fi movies that were really not on the mainstream, but yet they were they're more like obscure, that we really, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're very good, but never really made it to the main mainstream. I mean, they made it to the mainstream, but not very popular. Uh, maybe we can make a list and, and see if we can come up with any good ones for our next show next week. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and there's a ton, there's a ton out there that are a ton out there. You yeah. know, very good and, and that not many people uh, know about. Now, you know, one thing I wanted to just bring up to the table when you say Twilight Zone, one of my favorite. There's a couple, but the one I always remember is uh, Next Stop Willoughby. 
Oh, I love that. That's a yeah, good one. That one is, I thought it was yeah. really good. That's when the, the guy uh, comes off and he actually jumps off the train. But, <laughs> you, you know, um, there is also the one that it, that's really cool. And I know what you're talking about, Chuck, that it's like a dollhouse. Is that where the guy and the wife are uh, looking around? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's sure. so cool. Yep. Yeah, that, that's really, I mean, I didn't expect that to be a dollhouse in the beginning. I didn't yeah, expect the little girl giggling. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was, you know, throughout the scenario, she was giggling and laughing. Yeah. And then, they didn't know where they yeah. Were. And then the husband goes, Who's that kid laughing? I'm getting tired of this. <laughs> it, was, it was, it was good. Oh. Yeah. That, that was something I didn't expect, man. That really threw me off completely. Yeah. Um, you know what? Todd Serling died young. I think I mentioned this in the previous mm -hmm. podcast. Yeah. He was, uh, he was uh, 50 years old when he died in 1975. And he had, a, he had, uh, I, I I believe it was heart bypass surgery, and I guess back in those days it was wow. it, it was uh, pretty new. And uh, yeah. he he smoked a lot. I don't oh, know if yeah. it was like three packs a day or something, but uh, so you know what they they had performed the operation, yeah. and I think he pretty much just died on the operating table. But he was only fifty. His wife Carol Serling, I think, died only a year or two ago. She was about ninety two years old, I believe. Wow. Yeah, it's a shame, man. Because I'll tell you one thing: the Twilight Zone is one of those shows that you know a lot of people that are not familiar with it, they think it, they compare it, believe it. I've had people say, are you talking, because they compare the outer limits to the Twilight Zone mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it has a similarity. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, the Twilight Zone is phenomenal, man. And, yeah, and I think the Twilight Zone's in the class all by itself. But yeah. what Joe is saying is so true. I do have the five seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I paid a crazy amount for it, like 200 and some dollars when it came out. But I did sit with my son and watch every season one show at a time. I oh, did this many nice. years ago. I also did it with Lost in Space. I did it. Mm -hmm. But you know one thing, Joe, and, and this is something I don't know if you ever noticed, but, but, but when you do any of that stuff, when you watch the shows uh, starting, you realize that they actually have a chronological order to it. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that when you grow up and stuff because you see them sprankly all over the place, you know? But like Lost in Space, the first season was, you know, okay. The second season was phenomenal. And then the third season, man, you really had to hold on to the seat to stay there because it kind of was like, eh. Yeah. But um, that's how most of those shows are. And I Dream of Genie, I watched all, I mean, that six, I think six or eight seasons, whatever it was, that was hilarious, man. Oh, they one. were, that was a good show. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was a good show. Oh, man. Um, I tried doing that with Bewitch, but believe it or not, I never did watch all of Bewitch. I do have all the seasons, but I never sat down to actually watch it. Yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot of episodes to that. There was a lot. They, you yeah, know. like four or five seasons too. I, I think they were. I know. I Dream of Genie had um, I don't know how many, like a hundred and sixty. But yeah. I'll tell you one thing though, I love Lucy. I bought the entire collection. That thing is like twelve seasons. I've oh, never yeah. sat down to watch point. all of them. Yeah. But that is, I, I know that that's pretty good. I love Lucy. It was pretty funny, you know. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah. Very good. How about you, Joe? What do you have to say about I Love Lucy? Hey. I'm not a fan of I Love Lucy. <laughs> really? Oh, Joe? Not a fan. <laughs> not wow. a fan. No, but what I was going to say is that I and I've been I, I wish I knew what the cover it was, but when I was a senior in high school in speech class, we had to um we had to do our own little uh short story. You know, I, I think it was two pages. So at the time I was actually reading a Twilight Zone book. And um, it was it had like five or six uh, stories in it. And one of them was um, about the mighty Casey at bat, who mm -hmm, but right. they changed it up on, on the book a little bit um, where he was a pitcher and right. he was this, he was this great pitcher and everything. And then, he you know, he ended up turning up to be a, a robot. But, you know, that story really stood out to me. And I had written a story and I wish I remember what it was exactly but i remember that that story having an influence on the story that i wrote and after that i, I became a huge twilight zone fan and i'd watched a few episodes you know up to that point but after reading this book with the short stories you know it was um it was like full thrust from there man i i just oh, i, I yeah. love the twilight zone i love the reading and all these stories were by uh, rod serling and I wish I could remember with the um, I remember it was a, a pocket book. So it was, you know, a soft cover, very small. But I wish I could remember what it looks like, because I'd love to find that that book again. But what yeah. is it? What is it again, Joe? What is it about? It, it was a book of um, maybe five or six short stories of uh, Twilight Zone. 
but I believe that they were a little bit different um, than the episodes. Cause I think Chuck, there was a, um, like a mighty Casey episode. Am I correct? Yes, there was. Absolutely. Yes. And I can't remember if he was a, um, was he a pitcher or was he just a batter on that episode? I think he was a pitcher too, wasn't he? I think he was a pitcher. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So I, so they, it may have been kind of um, just a shorter version of these uh, episodes, but, they, they were really cool. I, I loved it. And um, I just I wish I could remember what the cover looked like so I could find this book again. But there are plenty of, of Twilight Zone books out there with some short stories and everything. And um, they're getting I tell you what, they're very hard to find. And when you do find them, that people have a, uh, a pretty good price tag on them. Oh, Joe, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to look that up for you, Joe, because I don't know. It sounds familiar. But, Joe, I got two questions for you. Did you ever watch Ben Casey, the doctor? Yeah. I remember Did that. you ever watch no, that? Uh, That's a. Uh, it really is a phenomenal show. It feels like it's more modern than you know when it was done in the fifties, whatever. But one question I want to ask you, Joe, and this is a really good because you're actually the first person that ever did say that about I Love Lucy. So I'm kind of curious. Did you ever uh, see them and try to watch them? Yeah, you know what I I've watched several of them back in back in the nineties and all that, and it's just you know they're all right. They're nothing that. It's not really like my type of of comedy show, I guess. Um, you know, I, I understand that it's cultural and it's you know pop culture impact and all that, and um, it, it just it it wasn't a show for me. I don't dislike. I have to say, I don't dislike it, and I don't like it. I just you know I, I don't really care for it. You're so sure. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, the people who were funny on it was Fred and Ethel Mirth and Mirths. They were hilarious. Oh, they were great. I, I, there's one particular show that has, uh, you know, Rick, uh, Ricky Ricardo and, and uh, uh, Ethel and uh, Fred and Fred, uh, they were uh, building a uh, fireplace and Lucy lost her marriage ring. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> and, and she that thought was... it was a sign. And then she uh, <laughs> took apart the, yeah. one of the funniest episodes ever. I mean, that, I think if Joe were to watch that, he'd probably get stuck yeah. with it, but yeah. uh, you do I, like think there were, I, I think there was quite a few versions that he uh, right. I mean, later on he would. Uh, I, I think that she was just with uh, uh, Vivian Vance, and then, no, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was uh, no. What happened was is uh, after I love Lucy. Yeah, people got to remember. A lot of people don't realize that Lucy was the one that they they started. Uh, was a Universal, right? Or well, Desi Lu Production is actually Desilu. owned by their kids, right? Uh, they were big. Uh, they owned the. In fact, I believe they sold. I don't know if it was Paramount. I think it was Paramount. They sold it for like 10, 20, or forty million dollars, mm -hmm. and later it was resold for one hundred and eighty million, something like right, that. Right. They actually started all all of that stuff. In fact, Ricky Ricardo, whatever his name was, Desi Arnaz, was actually the guy who did the two cameras thing. He invented that. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, it's. I mean, this is on Google. You can Google that. But he was the one that actually bought that to. Mm -hmm. where they had two cameras and they can have different angles and yeah. you know, something he bought into the television industry. I think the final Lucy show uh, type of a show. That was, was with like, her husband, her other husband after she got divorced from Desi. Yeah. Gary, yeah. Gary Morton, I believe. Yeah. And, it, and then up to the late sixties, she uh, played in the bank with uh, Mr. Mooney. Uh, which yeah. Was pretty cool. Yeah. That, yeah that that's, was... that's what I'm saying that she was around for a lot, but a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize that she actually was the owner of most of Hollywood back in the day. Yeah, right. She did. You're right. And and you, you go to Universal Studios and they have her there. And I'm like, did, did people ever realize that she was kind, kind of like the one that started all this stuff? Like Desi yeah. Lu, you yeah. know, Desi Arnaz and, and, and Lucio Bold. That's why it's called Desi Lu. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. their kids, uh, they actually had in one of their episodes, I became... I liked them because they had uh, George Reeves, Superman. They were mm -hmm. good friends, and, and he appeared in one of their episodes where it was Ricky Ricardo's birthday. I remember like, that. Lucy goes out on the edge there pretending to be him. and Yeah. But, but you know, though, honestly, there's some shows back then that when you look at you go like, wow, man. They, and if you go, like, to Westerns and stuff, you can't beat the guns of Will Sonic. Right. Even, even Brandon. Those shows are so phenomenal, man. I mean, I love that type of show. I could there watch forever. But um, but Joe, yes, the Twilight Zone are probably the most standout and probably the longest lasting of all of them, I think. Yeah, I think it, that's kind of like a household name, but I, I am a fan of um um oh boy, just just slip my so the outer limits. 
I, I do like the Outer Limits, and yeah, they are very different. <laughs> two different episodes, but the Outer Limits was very. Uh, Oh yeah, they're very they're sci-fi. Really, yeah, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. They, they were good too, and uh, Hitchcock, good, Hitchcock yeah. was good too. Yeah, I like. Oh them. yeah, yeah. Now, Sherry, what do you enjoy, Twilight Zone or Outer Limits? Yeah, when my sister and I, we'd snuggle up on the couch when we were little, and we'd watch The Outer Limits. And I, I don't know if Twilight Zone was on at the same time, or you know, I mean, like one after another. But mm -hmm. Alfred Hitchcock was always, I was always a fan of his. Oh, I, and, I uh, love his I enjoyed stuff. his short stories, a uh, couple books I read. And yeah, I was good. I liked it. Very cool. Now, did you sit with Chuck on, on New Year's Eve and, and watch Twilight Zone with him? I did. Oh, good. Very good. Yeah, now, that's, what, what, that's what episodes? New Year's special, huh? Now, now, are there any episodes that really stand out to you of Twilight Zone that you, you really enjoy? Uh, there's a few, like the one I said about the plane with okay. the monster on the plane. I think and, that's um, kind of that. It's almost like everybody's. Um, yeah, in a, a standard. In, in, and then the diner with William Shatner. Yeah, we like that. William Shatner. Yeah, that was a good one with him and his uh, wife. Got diner because their car broke down, and there's like a little. Uh, what's kind of. Uh, yeah, like, almost almost like a napkin holder, uh, fortune teller type of thing with a. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Cool. that's yeah. really wild. He gets all obsessive with that. That's yeah. pretty fun. <laughs> Now I was talking. We were talking about the Twilight Zones. We went out with um, my kids and their well, wife and girlfriend, and my uh, younger son Nick, his girlfriend Erin. She likes the one. She watches them too. I was surprised, yeah, okay. and she said she likes the one where the boy says, "I'm going to send you out in a cornfield." What's his oh, cat? Yeah. What's his name? Yeah. Uh, Bill Money. Bill Money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Space. Yeah, she likes that's that one. Funny. I yeah hate that I, I kind of hate that one because I want to hit him over the head. Don't you're you? You're a bad man. You're a very bad, bad man. Thing. Yeah, yeah I, come that's, on. Come I, on. Love, I love the one guy that said, "Won't somebody sneak up on him and just hit him in the head with a lamp or something?" You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that he. Oh my gosh, he played. You wanted to do that to him. Yeah, yeah, Billy, uh, Billy Moomy. Yeah, that was. Money. Yeah, that was yeah. a good one. Yeah. What was that called? The monster on. I, or, I forget what it was I called. Know. I forget. A uh, it, that's a really good one. Yeah, it was you know, I, I often wonder because sure, you mentioned you know you were surprised that she she watches Twilight Zone, but I wonder if if younger kids will even watch the new Twilight or the old Twilight Zones anymore because you know there was that new series that was just I I, I couldn't even w watch it a, a couple years ago, a Twilight Zone remake and um Did, well not a remake but as a remake of the Twilight Zone new episodes uh hmm. by um. Jordan I Peele. can't remember his name. Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele, yeah. And I know it got a lot of mixed reviews, but I'm wondering if if maybe if that turned on, you know, younger people were watching that and, the, you know, went to check out the originals. And, you know, I kind of wonder, you know, mm -hmm. how these originals, you know, because they definitely do stand the test of time. They, they're, they, definitely. they're very good. But, you know, a lot of people now, they, they get turned off by black and white stuff. It's like, ah, you know, it's we, we want – explosions and color and oh yeah they're you know, computer all about that. graphics and this and that and then mm -hmm. when they actually sit down to watch one of those like wow this is pretty good but mm -hmm. just exactly. getting them to sit down and watch it is the the issue you, you know Joe, to answer your question on that something interesting i loaned one time my 36 original honeymooners or 39 honeymooner episodes on dvd to a young kid in his 20s and the darn kid didn't want to give it back to me. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like I said, yo, are you going to bring me back my episode? Go, oh, uh, Eddie, let me. He watched them like three or four times. He goes, those are hilarious. Yeah. And that's what it is. A lot of people don't give the opportunity. But, uh, you know, Joe, maybe you can. Let me see your take on this. Why is it? Why do you think like people like Bill Money, who was such a great. Because, I mean, everybody knows him from Lost in Space. Yeah, hey, I love that. Even, show. You know, he started in the Twilight Zone. He started in a lot of shows. Mm -hmm. And now today they just disappear from, yeah. from yeah, you know I mean, I mean, I know today he's like a musician or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I met, there was a guy in my job that I actually were, grew up with him and they were best friends. And he did sign me an entire Lost in Space Blu-ray uh, and gave it to me. But what I'm saying, though, is it's kind of funny how actors like that just disappear and you don't see them act anymore. That's well, I know he was he was very. He was very much on the scene in the 80s, late 80s and 90s uh, at Comic-Cons and all that. He was playing as, mm. as part of his band. 
Um, I, I don't think, you know, I, I think sometimes these people, they just, um, they just kind of don't, maybe don't want the, um, the spotlight. I, yeah. The spotlight, you know, anymore, or they're tired of it. I, I guess if, you know, for some people, if, if you've been in the spotlight since you're a little kid, as you get older, you know, you might, it might kind of get a little old and you're like, I, I just kind of want my peace and quiet, quiet exactly. you know, and just the, you know, a little bit of spotlights fine and all that. Now I know he was, um, he was doing some touring and all that. So, and a lot of these people, um, do a little bit and and what's sad is that and it actually started back in oh gosh i think the 60s with buster crab you know he was the original flash gordon in the serials and all that and he was um he he was real big in in uh, a lot of other serials but you know he kind of disappeared and there was a, a guy who got a hold of him and said hey you know we, we want you to do these conventions and all that. And he's like, eh, nobody wants to, you know, nobody cares or wants to see me. You know, that, that's all old stuff. It was serials. That, that's kid stuff. And he was convinced to do a, 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 a convention and they had like a record crowd there that people wanted to see him. And he was very surprised that, you know, people remembered him and remembered his character and were interested in him. So I think a lot of these, uh, older, uh, older celebrities and all that that may have been celebrities when they were young and maybe when they got older you know they they were out of the spotlight or they they didn't work anymore you know might think that you know eh, who's interested in me you know nobody's mm-hmm. interested but they you know people really are so you know it, it, it's sad to see that and i know that there's been a lot of celebrities over the years um oh what's her name that um that played in um creature from the black lagoon the first one the the lady uh i know you're talking about it yeah i, I know who you I, mean i can't place i got her, her face name. yeah don't remember her name yeah and, and i let me see i'm gonna have to to look it up now because it's going to uh to to eat at me and i i don't know why i don't remember yeah the goon from the black yeah, lagoon. yeah. yeah. oh yeah just remember it's the julia goon. adams but that's she was it. that's it you know she was the same way too you know she didn't think you know why am i why should i do conventions nobody wants to hear from me and you know she ended up doing them till the day that she died because she was so popular and she loved interacting with the fans and all that and um yeah. you well, know rico browning is this was the same way so you, it, it's sad to think, you know, a lot of these golden age and uh, even silver age celebrities, um, if they're not in the Hollywood spotlight or making movies anymore, they don't think that they're, you know, people no. want to see them or they have exactly. any worth or anything. But, you know, we do want to see them, you know, because all these celebrities are they're dying out quick. So we, we want to see them. And I tell you what, there was even one. Um, I know. Gosh, I can't remember her name, but she had came to uh, Ron Adams. I got her for Monster Bash, and she had played in. Um, let me see, uh, the Body Snatcher with. Oh uh, yes, yes, she said she she's made appearances in Chiller. I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I'm gonna pull up her name. I forgot uh, right now. You know, uh, Joe. She, was the, she was the little girl, uh, Sharon Moffat. Oh, okay. Yeah. But she was a um. She had been out of the spotlight, you know, a, as an adult, and she was actually, you know, head of a church and all that, and. Ron Adams got a hold of her and she's like, you know, I don't want to do this stuff. You know, what's, you know, she, she didn't want to really be in the spotlight anymore. Didn't think people wanted her. She wanted to make sure stuff was family friendly. And uh, he ended up convincing her to come to monster bash and every monster bash after that, she came to until she passed away. Oh, that's so, nice. Yeah. Did Ron Adams kill her by having her in monster bash. Well, she, <laughs> yeah, she was, uh, <laughs> she was old. She died at 85, but yeah, she passed away last year, a few days before uh, Christmas. So, Joe, Joe, you don't remember the interview with Sarah Karloff that we had in one of our shows? How she said that, you know, how she was introduced into that thing, and then she didn't know that that many people were actually after, her. like, they became the monster kids or something like that. Do you right? Hmm. Yeah, she was the same way. You know, didn't yeah. think you know, you know, who would be interested in all this, and, and yeah, surprise, boom, surprise. But- you, you want to hear the biggest surprise, guys? When I went to Chiller last time, I purchased a poster, an original poster from the man. What is it called? The the 4D man or the four-dimensional man? And I got shocked when Dave Harvestside goes to me, Eddie. He's been my next-door neighbor for years. Uh, <laughs> the actual actor for that movie from the 50s or 60s, wherever hmm. it took place, lives next door. He's like 80-something. 
And I was like, I should have him try to see if he could sign the, you know, the poster for me. It would be nice. Yeah. But, you know, he hasn't seen him in a couple weeks or whatever. But that was kind of crazy. Yeah. Hey, but the it, bottom line is all, all that comes to like childhood memories. I mean, so that's yeah. why, you know what, it's, you know what, it's, it's, you know, nostalgic. it's, yeah, it's almost like a nostalgic type mm -hmm. of uh, thing. And so, and that's, and that's what the House of the Unusual is about, right? So, yeah, it is. Unusual. So, Joe, you're, you're 43, correct? 42. Oh, okay, 42. Ooh. What made you originally, I think you mentioned it one time, but what made you become an older man like us? Uh, <laughs> you're an old soul, Joe. I've always yeah. been an old soul. Yeah. Well, when did it happen to you? How how what did it happen? happen when did it happen 40, to you? 42 guess. years ago. <laughs> Gosh. 42 uh, years and nine months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do sound older, the things that you know. It's the amazing. Things that you like. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, you know what? I've always, you know, even growing up in the 80s, when I spent a lot of time with my grandmother because my both parents worked. Uh, and we yeah. always watched, uh, you know, she only had the three channels on, you know, her, her, her Zenith TV that you had to run up there and turn the knob. But we always watched a lot of older stuff. And then I always enjoyed, um, you know, TV programs that, you know, especially Saturday and, uh, and Sunday mornings that, and that's when they played a lot of older stuff. So I've always, you know, I always like the, you know, I, I the black and whites, the, you know, the stuff that, uh, I don't know, I, I guess regular kids didn't but i still like some of the newer stuff too but it just the, the older stuff appealed to me more it was more about the the stories and the characters um rather than i guess you would say like the um special effects and all that which i do appreciate special effects but you got to have a good story you know if you have a, a horrible story and special effects you you have nothing there in my yeah the, you that's know there's true. a there's a lot of stuff that's been coming out the last few years and it's just blowing up cities cars flipping I mean, yeah, no just, story. Yeah, no you know what? It's just, it says, it says, uh, uh, you know, uh, brought to you by Michael Bay. Yeah. And there's all kind of things flipping over and like cities the, blowing up. I don't know. The new monsters. That gives you an example of what they're talking about. Yeah. But you know what I think, too, that people that really, you know, even kids that grew up in the, the 80s and 90s that were into universal monsters like I was or any type of monster movies, you know, you, you eventually start working your way backwards and farther and farther and then you start branching out you're like well this is cool so i'm gonna check out this show well i like this actor so i'm gonna check yeah, out right, right you know this comedy show that this actor's in and you know i i think that was a lot that had to do with it too and i know there's a lot of people out there that are you know the same way especially when the you know the monster boom kicked in in the 60s and 70s you know i think a lot of people started looking back and you know, started liking a lot of this older stuff and started appreciating it a lot more as well. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you know, Joe, every time I see that girl, Carlotta, Carlotta something, the niece or granddaughter of the guy who started Universal Studios. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, Carla Lemley. Yeah. It's kind of funny, though, because I, I must be saying to myself, I mean, I'm saying to myself, she must be so angry inside. Yeah. That she has not, you know, because. If you think about it, they kind of lost the studio. They, it was taken basically from our family for a loan that, you know, the guy did by accident or whatever and the, didn't pay off or they didn't pay off in time. And then, on, but you know, to, to be, a, 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 you could be an heir to a million, you know, whatever dollars and you have nothing, you know, and you go like, but I started the whole thing, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it must be crazy to feel like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, she, you know what? She's, she's very knowledgeable. Eddie, Eddie had recommended uh, like a couple of the YouTube videos she's talking about, and she knows her stuff. Oh, wow. you're talking about the young, um, the the young late the young lady on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's oh, I thought you were talking about the older lady that passed away a few years ago. No, Carla. no, 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 no. I'm talking about the young lady on YouTube. Her grandfather was the one that. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I can't. Yeah, you sent me a couple of videos of it. I can't remember her name, but yeah, she was. Uh, she was very knowledgeable. Wow. She is very, very knowledgeable. But then again, it's like she says, you know, I wish I was like Paris Hilton, but unfortunately, uh. not. <laughs> <laughs> but it is her uncle. I think I forgot if it's her grandfather or her uncle. And, and, you know, it's kind of funny, though, because when you look back and, and you see how popular and how things have become today, that you at least would love to get some type of residual or 
And it, it's it's crazy. Like even when they do all those reruns, none of those actors really make any money, you know? No. Um, especially actors that have been around and then you see them working regular jobs and you're like, my gosh, when I was a kid, I saw, I mean, I, I understand if you came from shows like Bigfoot and Lightfoot, what was it, Lightfoot and Bigfoot or, or <laughs> Big, those stupid shows from the 70s, I can see you're not getting anywhere, but uh, you remember what you're talking about, Chuck? Yeah, oh yeah, I remember, yeah. What, what was it called, Bigfoot and, and what? Something like that, I don't know, yeah, but I know what you mean, yeah, they were silly. They were very silly, but you know what? But we we grew up in the era, and we always like, wow, man. I tell you what, that's that's one decade that I just I have trouble getting it into a lot of their movies, whether it's horror or sci-fi or anything. Is is the seventies? I just hmm. I I it, it's very hard for me to get into movies from that that decade. I I don't know. I I think it's because of just the whole um the the core of the sets the the music um the dress i just something about it it's very hard for me to get into it and you know what and if i i can't remember what kind of film they were using in the 70s but it it the, some of the transfers are, are absolutely horrible so there's that which they were using into the 80s as well and th those transfers were, were very bad but right right yeah 70s are just a, a decade that i just you know can't get into you know i i, I think every every decade has you know their their thing you have the 50s which was very sci-fi-ish um large bug monsters you had 60s that were getting into um sci-fi stuff and then it started getting into like the exploitation films on that which i you know i don't get into and then 70s was just i don't know it was just a weird decade to me so you know really late 60s through the 70s i just very tough, man. I don't know. <laughs> you know what it is, Joe? I got the answer for that really quick. In the 70s and 60s, we grew up watching the stuff from the 50s and 60s. You follow what I'm saying? The actual stuff that was done in the 70s, uh, you know, like, depending on what it was, if kids shows, Sesame Street and stuff, that was pretty cool. But the actual movies, what you're talking about, the actual movies, I think the only thing, like, Star Wars and Jaws were, like, and even King Kong were, like, the only probable thing that stands out in my mind. Right. Yeah. I, see, but you got to understand one thing. When I was a kid, I didn't watch anything from the 70s. I, re I rarely did. I really watched all the stuff from the 50s and 60s. And you know, you know, that That's how I am, too. And, you know, you really started to get into the um, the ultra gory and violence, too, in the, the late 60s, which really happened after... Um, uh, Night of the Living Dead, that kind of set the precedence for it, and everything started getting so violent. And you watch horror movies from the seventies; that's all about sex and gore and violence, and it, mm -hmm, right. there's no story behind the stuff. It's no, just, there's no, there's no story. You're right. Yeah, it's like, hey, here, here's all the sex, gore, and, and violence, and then you sit there for an hour and you're happy. You're like, what the heck? That they just watch a <laughs> snuff film or something. <laughs> you, you, you know, one thing I said to my wife last night: she's watching, she loves hearing all the music from the set, which is true, you know, the Bee Gees and all that. But I said. You know one thing, and I and I said, you know, we grew up in that era, but I said, damn, there's two things about it. The hairdos on guys was horrible, oh. they dressed bad, <laughs> and the women were really skinny, and they kind of didn't. But yeah, you look at the women from the 60s and 50s, and they look so feminine and stuff. Yeah, right. The 70s kind of really wasn't there, man. I agree with what you're saying. Joe. And everything in the 70s was an offshoot of the color yellow. It was a darker yellow, or it was yeah, a brown, yeah, or something terrible. like that. Like, but hey guys, we are we got to wrap it up. We're down to Thank two you. minutes here. So want to thank everybody once again for joining us and happy new year. We will be here every week for you guys this year in 2023. So don't forget to find us on your favorite podcast platform. Subscribe to us, give us a good review because that helps with all of the algorithm stuff. Uh, also go on to YouTube, House of the Unusual, tons of great videos on there. Uh, like and subscribe to our channel. Also, we have our flagship site, which is houseoftheunusual.com. Tons of cool uh, stuff to, to do there. We have a free forum that you could join, uh, interact with some like-minded individuals, post some of your cool stuff that you have, man. We're always wanting to see uh, people's collections and stuff that they like. And if you have any questions or you want to be a guest on the show, that is definitely the place to uh, hit us up. Also, check out mymoviemonsters.com. Uh, issue number 129 of Scary Monsters is shipping. It's the Creatures, Caverns, and Underground Worlds issues. And we also have number 36 of the Castle of Frankenstein magazine, which if you haven't read it yet, 
It is absolutely awesome. So definitely uh, check that out. So, guys, thanks, everybody, for joining us once again. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Eddie, Chuck, Sherry, thank you for joining us uh, once right. again, and we will see you guys next time. And good night, everybody. All right. Happy New yeah, Year. Thank you. God bless. And remember, the 70s was the golden age of mail. <laughs> uh, that's right. Good night. Bye. Good, good night. night.